So before this video gets rolling, guys, um, completely absent from the discussion within the video is the fact that the engine control module or PCM will have in its memory a lookup table for um, the basic or baseline um, fueling of the vehicle under different conditions and ignition advance and retard for that matter as well. But looking at the RPM and the engine load, the base uh, fuel figures will be logged in a read-only memory of some sort within the ECM and the trim values are adaptive. That is to say the new numbers will be plugged in to the baseline values which the car starts off with. That way it can adapt to any degradation in the system's performance. This is another reason you have to make sure your mass airflow sensor is reading accurately and uh, is in a healthy state because the engine load uh, is heavily based on the mass airflow. If the mass airflow isn't correct, the engine load isn't correct, meaning the car will be looking at the wrong lookup table for basic fueling. Also absent from the video, guys, is the notion of open loop and closed loop operation. The uh, fuel trims are only effective in closed loop. There are certain scenarios that will prevail upon the car um, where the car will actually ignore the feedback coming from the air fuel sensor. Uh, initial warm up of the car, for example, is typical. It'll be an open loop and wide open throttle are two scenarios that quickly come to mind. There are others where the car will go into open loop in a defect scenario where one of the critical sensors uh, has failed, the car may go into open loop as well. So that is completely absent from the video. Just keep in mind here, guys, we're talking about closed loop, normal operation um, with respect to uh, the discussion of fuel trim. I guess it was last week I had an issue with this particular aftermarket um, mass airflow sensor um, the values are skewed uh, on what it's sensing and it was throwing off my trim values in my car um, short and long term trim uh, was all out of whack and causing grief with the car causing it to rough idle and stumble and yeah it was uh, wasn't difficult effects but it was a wee bit of a thinking exercise and I was just thinking to myself, well, maybe I should take a minute to kind of explain fuel trim and uh, keep it simple, keep it basic, and um, just how it can be used in order to give yourself a direction with respect to the troubleshooting of your car, right? So I'll keep it really simple, guys. The car's actually running in the driveway there and it's streaming the data to my laptop here, which I've got on the telly just so we can see a few critical uh, numbers. So most of you guys are not new to the concept of uh, stoichiometry with respect to um, gasoline engine, internal combustion engine. Uh, stoichiometry is a fancy chemistry word for basically talking about the balance or sweet spot of things, right? So what I, I have here is obviously just a few bolts on my bench here, guys. But what it is doing is just kind of graphically representing how much uh, air is required from a mass standpoint and how much fuel is required, again, from a mass standpoint in order to reach that sweet spot with respect to uh, what, where's the sweet spot in chemistry as far as the balance of the two ingredients is concerned, air and fuel, in order to get a nice, clean burn, efficient clean idealized burn and it's about 14 to 1 14.7 to be exact but who cares right so ah that's all well and good great right that's what these numbers are about guys well basically go on screen here relates to keeping an eye on this balance you think uh i don't know what that's all about well see if we can see if we can make it make a wee bit of sense right so you have a mass airflow sensor in a modern car right i'm not talking about a car that has a gasoline uh, that has a carburetor old school carburetor i'm talking about a modern engine management system not even that modern i mean my car's what 15 16 years old now and it's been on the go since modern engine management systems have been on the go since what late 80s ish i think my 84 cutlass had a carburetor and they were gone shortly after that mid late 80s 
modern engine management systems came into effect and they all basically operate on this principle guys and what it is is effectively a feedback loop in order to make sure that this balance is being achieved in order to get best combustion efficiency cleanest burn and lowest emissions right that's basically the objective of what a modern engine management system is about trying to maintain this right so back to our numbers here so what the system basically does is through a mass airflow sensor and it's called stupidly on this little cheap scan tool here amount of uh, intake air you can see it's measuring at idle my car is sucking through is the throughput of air is about um, at this stage idling here let's call it about 2.2 grams per second of air that's how much air is going through the engine so now the engine management system knows how much air is going through the system assuming all the sensors are operative let's just assume a, se a serviceable system at the moment here guys now it knows how much air is going through the system how does it know the mass airflow sensor is sensing this um this amount of sorry that's the wrong line i'm pointing out here the amount of air here the mass airflow sensor is sensing this the engine uh control unit is processing its raw data and converting it into grams per second it knows how much air the engine is processing well if you know how much air the engine is processing you can measure the appropriate amount of fuel in in order to make sure that this air fuel ratio is maintained make sense how does it do that it does so by pulsing the injector for a certain amount of time here so I have injector pulse width on here right and it's in, it's pulsing the injector the on time is 2.6 um, milliseconds that's how fast it's pulsing the injector in order to maintain this correct ratio this is an idealized system right nothing in reality is idealized so how about we have some monitoring and some capacity to have an adaptive strategy if we de if we deviate from the ideal right so that's what the long and short term trim values are all about right so basically what the system does is again it measures the amount of air will inject that amount of fuel and in an ideal system that would be perfect there would be no need for correction but we have a watchdog on the scene here which is our air fuel sensor the air fuel sensor keeps an eye on the combustion process and um, we can keep it simple by saying an o2 sensor in the not too distant past would have looked about at the amount of oxygen that was present in the exhaust stream and made corrections for the uh, for the fueling based on that that's basically what the air fuel sensor does a wee bit different in process but effectively the same function keeps an eye on the combustion gases coming down the exhaust stream this is pre-catalytic there's an o2 sensor post-catalytic to keep an eye on the performance of the catalytic but that's neither here nor there for this discussion so what it does is if it sees us drift from the ideal um exhaust gas content with respect to the oxygen in it and it will know whether we're running too rich or too lean that is to say there's too much air in the mix for the amount of fuel being uh, uh, dosed into the system via the injector or there's too much fuel in the system relative to the amount of air so what we can do is we can adjust the pulse width of the injector in order to correct it. the ingredients in order to make the in order to get a, a decent product out of your oven you have to make sure your ingredients are in the correct ratio yeah and that's how the system actually does it right so again what we have is a uh, mass airflow sensor measuring the amount of air into the system if we know the amount of air we can dose the amount of fuel in via the injector we can either put more fuel by widening the pulse or less fuel by narrowing the pulse that's what this is all about right again in an ideal system that would be all that's required well we know that the system's not going to operate ideally things are going to wear we're going to have um, defects present themselves in in the form of malfunctions sooner or later some of them the car can tolerate some some it cannot but an adaptive strategy 
will allow us the best chance of keeping things most efficient and cleanest for longest for the life cycle of the vehicle. I hope that makes some sense, guys, right? So again, back to the long and short term here for just a second. What's this all about? So as the name implies, the short term will immediately react to any issue that presents itself in the air fuel mixture. And the long term, in simple terms, is simply an integrator, that is to say, this is looked at things over the long term, whatever time, uh, relative term that might be, and it's not that long really, but um, it's looking at things with a time component. It's not going to overreact to a short term condition. We're going to look at how different conditions can affect the trim values. So my car is actually operating with an operative sensor now. It's, it's uh, fueling short and long term uh, trims are actually near zero, zero being the ideal. This figure is positive. The system is adding fuel. If this number is positive, it is negative, then it's taking away fuel. That is to say positive up here is gonna widen, is gonna increase this number from the base injector pulse, whatever that would be, let's say it's 2.5 for example. And if this is negative, then it's gonna uh, narrow the pulse. So this, this time, uh, this time margin would actually shrink a buoy about 2.4, 2.3, for example, if it had to subtract fuel from the mix, if the salt was running too rich, for example. Too rich, um, if you have a condition. Let's, so let, let's consider a couple of different conditions on the car, right? So let's assume the car is running at near ideal 14.7 to one here, right? So these numbers would be dead on zero. Again, that's an idealized number. In reality, you'll likely never ever see it but it's close to zero. You can see my car is running decently at the moment, near zero. Just add in a little bit of fuel in order to keep the uh, system completely happy with respect to the monitoring via the air fuel mixture. So if the car was to develop um, a intake manifold leak, for example, right? So that's air that would be entering the system, would be entering the combustion process, but would not be measured by the uh, by the mass airflow sensor you've developed a defect you've got air coming into the system is not being measured by the mass airflow sensor the car is only fueling on what the mass airflow sensor is um is uh, seeing if we ignore the car the monitoring via the uh, air fuel uh, sensor for just a moment and what would happen is of course the car would start to run lean but of course the exhaust stream where the air fuel sensor is the air fuel sensor would say, no, no right, we're running too lean. It would start to trim these numbers up. This pulse width would get a wee bit wider. Then, the, uh, then sooner or later, the uh, air fuel mix would reach the correct point, at which point in time, the correction would stop. The long and short term numbers would adjust appropriately, but you would have elevated numbers with respect to the short and long term you have an issue you have an intake manifold leak for example is running to lean so the numbers would go up so some of you are probably thinking hang on a sec you just told me that if the numbers go up it runs richer and if it goes if the numbers go into the negative it's running leaner you have to understand the distinction between the condition and the correction if the car is running lean the system is going to is going to trim towards rich in order to reach again stoichiometry or the balance point the neutral point in the 14.1 14.7 to 1 ratio if these numbers were to go negative yes the car is trimming towards lean but it would be correcting for a rich condition right maybe high fuel pressure or i'm just making up an example guys right so those are situations that can prevail Okay, so here we can see the situation, guys. Again, take note of the, the uh, numbers here, especially the fuel trim values, short and long term. Again, relatively close to zero and uh, the amount of uh, mass airflow. And um, keep an eye on the uh, AF sensor current and the injector pulse width as well. Well, basically all of the parameters I currently have on screen. I've got rid of all the superfluous parameters, guys, all the ones that are kind of just distracting from the issue. Um, but these are the ones we need to keep in mind, right? So let's go uh, make a vacuum leak here. Car 
one rough. Make die actually. Let's see. Massive vacuum leak is trying to cope with. Like this will illustrate the point if the car can stay running. So there's the short term uh, fuel. Look at the amount of fuel. That is the limit. I suspect that is the absolute limit that it can actually trim to. And again, the long term is a time integrated function. If we let any amount of time pass here, guys, we'll see this value start to clock up. And the injector pulse width is pretty erratic because the car is running quite erratically here. But you can see the injector pulse width is much, much wider. It's uh, twice, close to twice the amount of fuel that was in there before. Why is it twice the amount of fuel? Because the massive vacuum leak is running leak lean, right? The car sitting the uh, air fuel sensor. Look at the amount of current there now. Is saying this car is running extremely lean off the fuel. It's trying to correct for this. Uh, for this uh, disparity in air fuel balance. It's widening the pulse on the injectors, probably as wide as it will go in this running condition at this particular, in this particular load, this particular speed, it's trying to make all the correction it can. This number will start to clock up, as I said, given enough time, that will start to clock up. Okay, so let me just clip in a, um, a voice over here at this section here, guys. The reason it being, I don't think I did the distinction between the short term and the long term uh, fuel trim uh, justice. There is two uh, fuel trim figures, the short and the long term. The two of them combined gives you the total fuel trim. The difference between the two is, as I said in the video briefly, the short term reacts immediately is dealing with an acute issue that presents itself on the car, right? Um, as opposed to the long term, which is dealing with chronic issues. If you had a vacuum leak that stayed chronic, was unattended to, the long term fuel trim figure will surely clock up. As it clocks up, the short term will start to drive back closer towards zero. The idea, the rationale behind that is, the, if you have zero short term, it still has latitude to uh, react towards um, any other condition which would present itself, uh, any engine operating condition which was, will result in a lean or a um, rich condition. If it stayed at 20, there would be no latitude in order to react to a secondary condition presenting itself. So that's why they have a short and a long term um, value. So if you look at the values and you see that even the long term is is clocked quite a distance away from zero, the ideal figure, um, then you know that this condition has likely been presenting itself for at least some time on the vehicle. Uh, the mass airflow sensor has a massive influence on the calculated load, guys. Clearly the car is fueled based on how much load is on the car as well, in addition to some other parameters, right? So the amount of intake air is gone, uh, is, is erratic now. The car is idling way out of whack, right? The RPMs are all over the place. We're looking for an idle uh, target of 729 RPM. The idle's all over the place because of the massive uh, intake manifold leak. Anyway, I think that's enough of me droning on enough for one night. Hopefully uh, you grasp the basic concept of fuel trim, guys. It's extremely useful appreciating what's going on with a car what condition are you trying to run down what's the car trying to tell you that's it boys cheers